The Prime Minister's top adviser, Dominic Cummings, has denied doing anything wrong when he drove to his parents' home during the lockdown in March. At a news conference in Downing Street, Mr Cummings said he did not regret his decision to travel 260 miles from London to Durham with his wife, who was ill, and their four-year-old son because he claimed that none of their usual childcare options were available. He repeatedly denied that he'd broken the rules and rejected the idea that he'd undermined the government's clear instruction to stay home. Well, tonight the Prime Minister reaffirmed his support for Mr Cummings, but said he did regret the confusion and anger that many people felt. Now, during the day, official figures showed 121 more deaths registered in the past 24-hour period, and that brings the total number of deaths so far in the UK to 36,914. We start tonight with our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, at Westminster. Hugh, well, political advisers are meant occasionally perhaps to be seen and never to be heard. But Dominic Cummings, the Prime Minister's right-hand man, his co-partner through the campaign of Brexit and then through the general election, took a dramatic step today, opening himself up to repeated questions about why he had made the decisions that he had made, why his decisions to leave London during the lockdown could be justified. Now, he majored on the small print, unusual for a man who's so used to painting political campaigns in bold primary colours. But knowing that so many members of the public were incensed by what has happened, he spent a long time, perhaps, answering as many questions as they were, trying to explain something that many in the Tory party felt could not be explained, trying to do, make the best of a very bad situation for the Prime Minister. But it's far from clear tonight whether Dominic Cummings has managed to save himself in the long term. Morning. The rule is unwritten, but it is real. Advisors aren't meant to be the story. Already, this is day four of headlines about Dominic Cummings. He's made a career out of trying to rewrite political convention. Even for him, this was astonishing. Using the Downing Street Garden, normally reserved for world leaders, to explain or to apologise or perhaps fight back. Sorry I'm late. I know that millions of people in this country have been suffering. Thousands have died. Many are angry about what they've seen in the media about my actions. I want to clear up the confusions and misunderstandings. First, I was worried that if my wife and I were both seriously ill, possibly hospitalised, there was nobody in London that we could reasonably ask to look after our child and expose themselves to COVID. My wife had felt on the edge of not being able to look after him safely a few hours earlier. I was thinking, what if the same or worse happens to me there's nobody here that I can reasonably ask to help. I thought the best thing to do in all the circumstances was to drive to an isolated cottage on my father's farm. At this farm, my parents live in one house, my sister and her two children live in another house, and there is a separate cottage roughly 50 metres away from either of them. My tentative conclusion on the Friday evening was this. If we are both unable to look after our child, then my sister or nieces can look after him. I did not ask the Prime Minister about this decision. He was ill himself and he had huge problems to deal with. Every day I have to exercise my judgment about things like this and decide what to discuss with him. I thought that I would speak to him when the situation clarified over coming days. On Sunday the 12th of April, 15 days after I first, after I first displayed symptoms, I decided to return to work. My wife was very worried, particularly given my eyesight had seemed to, seemed to have been affected by the disease. She did not want to risk a nearly 300 mile drive with our child, given how ill I had been. We agreed that we should go for a short drive to see if I could drive safely. We drove for roughly half an hour and ended up on the outskirts of Barnard Castle Town. I felt a bit sick. We walked about 10 to 15 metres from the car to the, to the riverbank nearby. We sat there for about 15 minutes. We had no interactions with anybody. This is where it began. On the 27th of March, watch Mr Cummings running out of work. He'd just discovered his wife had fallen ill. Worried about childcare, they drove that night more than 200 miles to the family's farm in County Durham. Mr Cummings, the next day, developed severe symptoms, but his wife recovered and was able to look after their four-year-old. At some point, he told the Prime Minister he'd gone north, but it's not known when. And on the 12th of April, 
Having somewhat recovered and taken medical advice, the family went on that test drive 30 miles away. And on the 13th, the family drove back to London. Do you regret what you did? Because many people in this country have made heartbreaking sacrifices in the last couple of months in order to stick to the rules that you were part of putting together. And many people may have listened to you and think you made your own interpretation. And do you understand for some people, it seems as if there was one version of the rules for you and one version of the rules for everyone else. Uh, no, I don't, I don't regret um, what, what I did. As I, as I said, I think um, you know, reasonable people may well disagree about how I th thought about what to do in, 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 the, in, the, in these circumstances, but I think that, I think that what I did was actually reasonable in these, uh, um, in these circumstances. Will the public tolerate his reliance on the small print? Walking away, did he believe his explanations have got him off the hook? His boss wanted to make announcements about the next stages of easing the lockdown. But while he might still have looked unfamiliar with the details, he had to defend him still. Good evening. You knew your chief advisor had gone against the spirit of the lockdown rules, whether driving 30 miles to a local beauty spot when he was in County Durham, supposedly to test his eyesight, or not self-isolating straight away when his wife had symptoms. Dominic Cummings would not express any regret about any of that this afternoon. Do you? Um, I, didn't, I didn't know uh, about any of the arrangements in advance. We had a brief conversation in which I think uh, Dominic Cummings mentioned uh, where he was. But I have to tell you, uh, Laura, at that particular stage, I had a, a lot uh, on my plate and uh, really uh, didn't focus on the matter. And I do regret the confusion and the anger and the pain that people feel. I really did want uh, people uh, to understand exactly what had happened. And so that's why we had uh, the, the statement and the, the, the very extensive questions that we did uh, today. The Prime Minister standing by his adviser, famed and feared for believing that rules are there to be broken. To That's always come with big political danger for Dominic Cummings. Now it couldn't be closer to home. Well, Laura, after all of those questions and the answers, where do you think Dominic Cummings stands now? Well, I think it's still going to be tricky. It's difficult to know exactly where this will all land. This has been a very febrile couple of days for the government. And as he gave those very detailed answers, they confirmed the central allegation here that at the very least he did break the spirit of the lockdown rules by not self-isolating straight away when a member of his family got the virus. He went back to work at Downing Street before leaving to go to County Durham. He did then leave London to go to County Durham during the lockdown. And he did then later on take this trip supposedly to test his eyesight, a 60-mile round trip at the time when the country was being told again and again to stay at home. Now, he has provided repeated justifications of why he thinks he was an exception to those rules. He says it's there in the black and white. But many of his critics will tonight say, and are saying privately, and a few of them publicly, that actually that is the very problem with Dominic Cummings is that he has made a career out of believing that he is the exception to the rule and that's why he's become damaging to the Prime Minister. So let's pick up on that point that you underlined there which is you know the attempt today and yesterday really to kind of draw a line under this as far as the government's concerned. Are you saying tonight that they have done that or that we're still not sure? I think it's a big question mark here, frankly. I mean, there is a sense that this statement and him getting those answers out there, which quite easily he admitted he should have done a couple of days ago, um, there is a sense that they might have started to cool some tempers on the Tory back benches. You remember some Tory MPs out there saying that he should quit, many more of them privately, and some ministers very unhappy at what might have happened. But we are, remember, in this strange and serious national moment, public opinion is understandably, for a lot of people, very angry about what's happened here. We know also that there's concerns among some NHS leaders about how he may have undermined that vital public health message which will be so important in the weeks to come. So in Downing Street there is a bit of a sense that they might have got him out of the woods. But I think there's no realistic proposition that somehow tomorrow morning no one will be mentioning this at all. Laura, once again, many thanks. Laura Kinsberg there with the latest at Westminster.